Dividing property in a divorce is probably not what you think. I'm Shanna Borman here with straight talk and honest advice about family law in the Brazos Valley. And tonight we're going to discuss what is it to divide property in a divorce. We're going to talk about Borman's four simple steps to divide property. But first, we need to think about the most important thing, which is the mindset. Now, the mindset you need to get into is that this is just business. Dividing property in a divorce is nothing more than a business transaction. If you give a lot of value, emotional value, that is, regardless of the financial value, to a particular asset, don't think your spouse doesn't know exactly how much you care about it. So what I mean by that is, if you care about that snow globe you got at Caesar's Palace on your 10th anniversary, your husband or your wife's going to know you care about that asset, and they're going to wonder how much are you willing to give up to get it. So get in the mindset that property is nothing but stuff, and you can get more stuff later. So now let's get on to Borman's four simple steps to dividing property in a divorce. Okay, so step one is that we have to identify what property there is to divide. So typically what I tell my clients is that if you're going to move out of the house, go ahead and photograph everything in the house, but give me some dimension when you're doing those photographs. So by that, I mean, stand in the doorway of the room and click a picture. Don't get right up on top of something and click that picture. So we want to get photographs generally of what's there so we can list every item you own from your house down to the last tube of toothpaste. If you want to get that specific, those items need to be identified so that they can be divided later. Okay, so step two is once we've identified the property, we then classify the property. And so by that, I mean, is it separate property? That is, did you own it before you got married? Or is it community property? Did you buy it while you were married? So when you're buying things during the marriage, sometimes you can buy it with money that you get for, as a gift from someone. So we need to know that too. When we're talking about the assets themselves, people that come in and talk to me say, well, I bought it with my money. Well, the bottom line is all your money is actually y'all's money. And so because it's both of your money, that is all the money you earn is community property, that pronoun problem we need to have a little bit of a visit about. It's not your asset because you bought it with your earnings because your earnings are community. So now here we are to step number three. If you'll remember step number one was identifying the property. Step number two was classifying the property. And now here at step number three, what we're gonna do is value that property. And so if you and your spouse can agree on the value, that's certainly one path. But what we also can do is look to third party people to see other sales that happened of that particular asset. That is to say, how much does a stranger pay for that item if some other person were selling it? So if you don't have to sell the item and somebody doesn't have to buy the item, that means you get, you get a pretty clear fair market value of what that item is. So we want the fair market value, not what you paid for it, but what you could get for it if you sold it today. So we've done the first three steps. We've identified, we've classified, and we've valued. Now what we have to do is we divide the property. And in Texas, we use a just and right, fair and equitable division approach. So that's not 50-50. We don't cut everything down the middle and you get half the couch and your spouse gets half the couch and they get half the television and you get half the television. We put the whole asset in your column in this big virtual Excel spreadsheet. And then that value is offset by the value we put in your spouse's column. So ultimately at the end, we want to get to close to an equal-ish split, but we take into consideration who can best recover from paying debts or incurring other taxation or other sorts of consequences as a result of the divorce division. So lots of factors go into consideration, but that's that fourth and final step that most people don't understand, but that we sit down with you and help Help you get the assets that will maximize your benefit in the long run. Okay, so hopefully you found Borman super simple four steps to divorce property division helpful. I know that it's hard, 
I know it's confusing when you're in a divorce and I know you're emotionally connected to the stuff you and your spouse accumulated during your marriage. Of course you have emotional connections. We all do. I understand that, but we're here to help guide you through this process. And I know that we can help you if you need us. So give us a call.